Hi everyone. In this video we're looking at how to use the Woo filter elements. There are four of these layout elements. The Woo filter active element, the Woo filter by attribute element, the Woo filter by price element, and the Woo filter by rating element. And these can be used in a shop to allow users to filter the products by their various attributes. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The Woo filter elements replace the equivalent WooCommerce widgets. The first thing to understand with these elements is that they are layout elements, so you can't use them directly on a shop page. And the second thing is that they only work with product archives. So the way you have to build your shop page to take advantage of Woo filter elements is to use the postcard archives element in a layout section on a conditional layout set to display on archives, product archives type, and optionally archives or product categories. This would then work on the shop page and the product category pages. So today I'm going to take the shop page from the Como Farm website that I initially built in the How to Customize a Nevada Pre-built Site video series, linked below, and then customized in the How to Use the Woo Minicart element video, also linked below, and change it to use a layout and add the Woo filter elements. Let's do this one step at a time. Currently the shop page here is just a normal page using the postcards element to display the products. We have to make it use a layout, so let's head to Avada, Layouts, and create a new layout. I'll just call this New Shop and create it. I won't set the conditions for the layout just yet, as they would be active immediately, and override our current shop page content. So I'll add a new content layout section. Let's call this New Shop Content, and I'll edit that. OK, so now we have a new layout section ready to go, and I want to basically reproduce the look we have on the existing shop page. I'll start by going to the Content tab on the Layout section Options and setting 0 pixels top and bottom padding. And now I'll just add a container to remove the starter page. So now let's go back to our shop page and copy the content into this Layout section. I'll just copy the first container and come back and paste that in above this empty one. Now I'll come back and copy the second container with the title and text and come back and paste that in after the top container. And finally, I'll go and copy the last container with the sticky column and the products, and come back and paste that in under the title container. OK, now we can also delete that empty container at the bottom. OK, so here we now have the shop content in a layout section, so I can add the filter elements. But to get this to work, I'm going to have to replace the postcard element with the postcard archive element. Before I do that, I'll just go to the layout section options, and the layout section tab, and set the view dynamic content as archives, and I will choose the archive type of product. OK, so now I'll delete that postcard element, and add the postcard archives element instead. I'm still going to use the same postcard, so I will select the products postcard, and I'll just head to the design tab to tweak this a bit. I'll set the postcard alignment to stretch, and the number of columns to two. OK, so now it's time to add our Woo filters. I'm going to add them in the sticky column under the mini cart element. Let's start with the title element. I'll clone the top title and drag it to the bottom and edit it to call it Filter Our Products. On the Design tab, I might just also edit the top margin to 50 pixels. OK, so now let's add the first of the Woo filter elements, the Woo filter active element. This element will only show on the front end when there are active filters. So regardless of the other filter elements you use, you will always want this one. I'll just override the font size back to 22 pixels, but otherwise I think the default options will work for me. Now I'll add the filter by price element. Again, I'll override the title font size, but otherwise I'm happy with the default styling. Check out these elements though, as there are quite a few design options if you want to style them differently. Next, I'll add the filter by attribute element. This one you can use multiple times if you have different attributes set up on your products. For this one, I'll set the title to say Filter by Size, and two options down, I'll select the Size attribute, the only one I have on my products. For Display Type, you can show a list or a drop down, but List is good for my example here. On the Design tab, I'll again override the font size to 22 pixels. Finally, under this, I will add the Woo Filter by Rating element, and apart from overriding the font size on the Design tab, this one is good as is. OK, let's save our layout section and come back to our layout. To make this active, I'll set the conditions. 
so I'll go to the Archives tab and select Product Archives Type for the shop page. As I mentioned before, you could also select Product Categories to use the layout for the category pages, but I've only got one category of product here, so I'll limit it to the shop page. Now finally, if I come back to the shop page, which is the assigned shop page in the Woo settings, and head to the Page Options and the Content tab, here I have to set the Show Woo Commerce Shop Loop to Yes, so the Postcard Archives element in my layout has something to display. So let's save this page. And now when I go to the front end, the page displays with my layout and the filters are there in the sticky column. As you can see, the filter active element is not currently displaying. Let's test it out. I'll just filter to products with a price $90 and up and click on filter. And that reduces our products to two and now shows the active filters at the top. If we filter now by size and choose large, the page refreshes but doesn't change as these are both large products. But we can see large is now an active filter. And if I now select a filter to five star rated products only, it comes back to one product. To clear a filter, you just click the X to remove it. Obviously these are very simple products to filter, and most times you would want to use this you'd have a much more complex shop, and probably lots more product attributes, but you should get the picture from this. It's a bit advanced to set up, but the Woo filter elements are a great way to let users filter your products in both the shop and category pages. So that's the Woo filter elements. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments if you have used this on your site. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the Woo filter elements. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.